We've seen consensus and other uh, crypto and Bitcoin conferences kind of move around and, you know, one year it'll be in New York. Uh, this year it's in Austin. Do you guys have any plans to branch outside of Miami or go international with the conference? We want to be a the global Bitcoin conference. We don't want to be constrained to one city. Uh, with that being said, Miami is an amazing city for us to be in right now. So uh, we're not fighting the fact that Miami is going heads deep into Bitcoin and the crypto industry. We're not fighting the fact that Florida is a freedom state. We're not fighting the fact that there's great parties there and you can travel there easily. So we love Miami. We we want to continue to work with Miami, uh, but we absolutely are. An, we are an international, global, world conference for Bitcoin. Um, and we're going to be rolling out a lot of awesome stuff to bring the Bitcoin conference experience to people around the globe. Uh, so stay tuned for more announcements around that. But um, yeah, we're excited to, you know, bring the Bitcoin conference to many cities into the future. So uh, again, more announcements to come throughout this year, uh, but we have some awesome plans. I've got a question for you that I hope you answer in honest, with honesty. Um, so I've been involved in the crypto space. I say crypto because obviously it's, you know, I've, I've worked with Bitcoin and other crypto cryptocurrencies for a while. And there's some crazy stories that I've got to tell in my time. But obviously, you know, you, you've been involved in organizing some big conferences, okay, with many different people. And I'm sure many are wonderful degenerates. I'm sure many are wonderfully smart, simple, quiet, calm people. Have you, what is, and you can obviously decide to not tell me if you don't want to, what is the most fucked up story that you've got or the craziest story you've got? Like there's gotta be something like a war story or even just whether it's, I don't know, behind the scenes or just like something crazy someone did at the conference. You're like, what the hell? Or like someone shot on stage. I don't know. Just <laughs> give me the craziest story or the weirdest no, I, I story got, I got, you've got. I got stories. I got stories. Um, so here's one, Bitcoin 21 one of our more notorious speakers is Floyd Mayweather, who is fighting a fight which he lost the next day. Um, and for, you know, we deal with a lot of different people at this conference. It's a massive stage. People want to get on stage and show whatever they're showing. And we're always trying, we're emailing them. We're telling them rules like Bitcoin only. There's a Bitcoin conference. You don't go to a, you know, a cooking show, a cooking conference and talk about, you know, uh, homework or, or taxes, you know, you, you, so like stay on brand, right? Stay on topic. So Floyd Mayweather, a, uh, let's just call it, uh, a, a, a wild card. And we all knew he was going to be a wild card rolls in deep with his squad of his posse wearing a scam t-shirt. Literally it's Ethereum max, which is a verified scam. I, I believe multiple people have been sued by the sec regarding promotion of ethereum max multiple celebrities so he's rolling in to our conference backstage with ethereum max uh, i'm not actually part of this story but our head of programming at the time brandon green who's our chief of staff now he he like looks at him right away and brandon is a little bit taller than me probably 25 pounds less skinnier than me he's like he's a tall lanky guy um you know, he, he like looks at Floyd Mayweather, you know, at a time went potentially one of the, the best boxers in the world at, at one point is like, was the best. And he's like, no, you got to take your shirt off. You can't go on stage with that shirt. <laughs> so he calls me up. I'm at the actual merch store. He's like, I need every single shirt in uh, every single style and shirt in Excel at the backstage immediately. Uh, so that way we could try to like appease Floyd and give him a shirt that he's willing to wear. I run back there with all these shirts. Brandon is, you know, is, you know, trying to appease Floyd, but be like, but actually you're not going on stage with that shirt on. You can't go on stage with the Ethereum Mac shirt on. Um, so I'm offering him all these Bitcoin magazine shirts and these different Bitcoin shirts. He's like, no, I don't want any of that. And then eventually he just like looks at one of the guys in his posse and he's like, give me your shirt. And he puts on his, his, his homie shirt, which just like some random design on it. He goes up on stage and proceeds to just completely just screw it up. It, it absolutely sucked. You know, despite that, the moment was still classic. Him going up on stage and, and, and doing that is still, it's still a classic moment. 
Um, but yeah, it would have been a lot worse if he was wearing a Vidya Max, Max t-shirt. So we're very thankful that Brandon had the guts, you know, to stand up to him and his crew. Like, it's not just him. It's him and a crew. And like, no, you're not getting on stage with that t-shirt on. Damn, man. Yeah, that's that takes balls. Like, that's that's the uh, that's probably, I mean, arguably the best uh, pound for pound boxer of all time. And yeah, as you said, a whole crew of people probably taller, bigger, and scary as scary as he is looking wise. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I consider myself quite ballsy, but I'm not sure I could just go like, you're not wearing that body, like without at least a couple of people with me, you know, like, just like, you're not getting on stage. Sorry. <laughs> like, no, you can, you can leave now if you don't want to take your shirt off. That's crazy. It's like um, I'm, I was imagining that it was going to turn into I don't know if you know the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, like Mike Tyson, like classic WWF thing from back in the day where they're like brawling and everything. It was like a classic where Mike Tyson goes on and then he's all like, this is my ring. I was imagining it's going to get like that. Like, this is my conference. And then like, <laughs> you know, like your buddy's scrapping with uh, scrapping with him. But luckily that didn't happen by the sounds of it. So uh, no, I like it. That's a, that's, a, that's a good story. That's a good enough story to me. I, I'll take that one for sure, man um i guess uh i've got something again another random ass question that i was uh thinking of before i came on here because i remember i i again i could be wrong here because i don't have anything to back this up um but i i swear that you guys had an office in kiev at one point i might be wrong you can tell me if i'm completely wrong but i swear i remember seeing something about that like, like a while ago like a year or years ago uh so i was interested to see like if you still had that like before the whole war situation broke out and like how that would have affected that situation i just thought i don't know i thought it could be interesting to see like how you guys if, if you had to deal with anything with that or what what happened around that we actually do have bitcoin magazine in ukrainian and russian uh we are in the process of launching that website uh, i just spoke to the general manager of our satellite our satellite team there uh right now it's currently like four people um she actually for the first for this this week is the first time she's back in the official Kiev office. Uh, so uh, I think that team is going to move forward as a remote team once the lease ends. But uh, she was actually in Germany and she went back to Kiev and today she called me from the office. So um, she's at the office. But yeah, obviously, you know, we saw Ukraine is a Bitcoin and crypto native country. You know, they, they're at the heart of a lot of conflict. They uh, are not on the Euro system. They uh, have an international tech savvy population. Uh, and even before the war, they were prime for Bitcoin. So we wanted to be there. We wanted to have Bitcoin content, Bitcoin magazine content in Ukrainian for the Ukrainian people. Uh, obviously, the war was a massive, uh, you know, deterrent and a horrible a uh, thing that is still ongoing, but uh, yeah, we, we're still pushing forward. I'll get you the link actually to our, our Ukrainian Twitter account. Um, that's, uh, we have that telegram and a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, and a website is coming uh, as quickly as possible. Nice. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm glad I wasn't just making it up because I swear I'd seen something about it before. Aside from the Russian Ukrainian market, are you guys in any other uh, like emerging markets like Latin America or Africa or anything like that? It's been a journey just to get to where we are within the English market. And now there's so much demand for our content in every other language in all other markets. Uh, we are trying to scale responsibly. Uh, so we have a great partner that's enabled us to go to Ukraine. Uh, we're hoping to scale out in other languages, and we're hoping to work with other partners to enable us to uh, reach other languages. But uh, we're trying to take a, uh, let's just say, a measured, uh, a measured path to doing that because it's just an enormous amount of complexity. Uh, and, you know, I, I still feel like we're a startup in what we're doing within our core business. <laughs> so uh you know uh yeah that, that that's my answer people are always reaching out to me like uh can i start a business like a bitcoin magazine arm in asia can i start it you know in in you know i get a ton in portuguese or in spanish uh so we are actively vetting opportunities and we're trying to expand but uh we're trying to do that responsibly yeah, if you go too quick, then uh, you'll end up probably having some issues on translation or legal problems or all sorts of issues, or then the quality gets reduced drastically and all sorts of crap. So uh, quality smart. assurance is a big deal. 
Yeah, hundred percent. That makes a lot of sense, especially with as well if you're dealing with someone that you don't necessarily know, right? Like they could just be cold approaching you, and you have no idea how how it's going to go. And yeah, there's a whole lot of uh, issues. So that makes a lot of sense. But it'd be cool to see it in you know hundred plus uh, languages printed out and everything. That'd be uh, badass to see like a copy, and then maybe you could do like a rerun of the first edition, but not in English, in all the other languages or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. CK, if people want to follow you on social media, like what's your Twitter? Um... How can they get their hands on a printed copy of Bitcoin Magazine? Can you give us all that kind of info? So uh, get your hand on a printed copy of Bitcoin Magazine. Go to store.bitcoinmagazine.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at CK underscore snarks. So that's CK underscore S-N-A-R-K-S. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can follow Bitcoin Magazine at Bitcoin Magazine. You can follow the conference at the Bitcoin Conf. Uh, and yeah, hit me up if you want a job in the space. We're hiring a ton of different roles. Uh, jobs.b.tc is where our latest job postings are. I think there's like 10 up there right now. We're also post those on bitcoinerjobs.com. Uh, and yeah, you know, I have the best job in the world. You know, we give a platform to Bitcoin plebs to write. So actually, if you want to contribute, if you want to post an opinion piece to Bitcoin magazine, hit us up, editor at bitcoinmagazine.com. And uh, I get to hire Bitcoiners to Bitcoin all day. So uh, I have the best job in the world uh, between those two things. So uh, I feel blessed and uh, love to hear feedback about what we're doing at Bitcoin Magazine. So hit me up whenever. Mm -hmm.